Welcome to Scrap and Coffee. Let's continue the tutorial for the Coffee and Friends folio. So in our last videos, we've made the cover for the folio and we've made the left inside. And you still owe me the booklets that were going in the angled pockets. So let's start with that so I'm not able to forget it. For the booklet you will need two pieces that measure 11 inches by 3 and 3 quarters and you are going to make a score line at 5 and a half inches. And it's really easy because that's all, you're going to fold it in half. And that's your booklet and you will have two, you will need two of those. So in order to make it a little bit more interesting, you can use a corner punch on these, or you can make one side a little bit shorter than the other side, but that's all up to you. So now we are going to start on the right inside for the folio. And I have my pieces prepared again. So again, I've cut and scored all my pieces and I've placed the tape on all my pieces. Also, I would like to, uh, I would like to remind you that the cutting guide is available on my website, scrapandcoffee.com. It's a free PDF file that you can download over there. So we are going to start with piece E. It's the large piece that has one score line and we are going to fold on that score line. And burnish that fold. Then we have our piece T with two score lines, fold on those and this side of the folio will come together a lot quicker than the other side so hopefully I can do it all in one video. So this is what we have now. Back to our piece E, this time we will have the folded side on our right side and we are going to place this piece on the left side but I'm sorry if it's confusing you I'm going to turn the piece over and it doesn't really matter because it will look the same but uh, because it's easier for me to work on the right side so I'm going to line up the pieces with the top and bottom As good as I can. I know I'm trying to be way too perfect over here, but that's just what I do. <laughs> Remove that tape backing and place it on there. So with this piece we've created the tunnel again for our binding that will go onto the spine. So the folded over edge is on our right side and we've placed this piece on the left side. Then that's the last piece for this part already, that's piece U. And this time I've placed the tape not on the dented side, but on the bumpy side. And I'm going to taper the corners of that half inch, starting at the score line. Fold it towards the bumpy side. And now this piece will go into the binding. So the tape is on the inside of the folded over flap and we are going to place it in that tunnel on the side where the binding is going to be. Like this. Just make sure we are going up to the score line, still be able to see it. Make 
make it straight. And stick that down. So again, we've had our extra flap now over here, but we still have this tunnel opening. And that's that is all for this side of the of the page. So we can now take our cover and place it onto our last spine. So let's see if my glossy accent will cooperate. I'm going to place it on that half inch, staying away from that fold. Do that on both sides. Hold it over a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. So now again I have my folded over piece on the right side. And here we've attached our other pieces with our opening and I'm going to place that onto that spine. stick it down so again I'm going to check quickly if the back is looking good as well and it is so I'll give it a good burn so the glue will attach to it really good and then we are going to place this to the side and let it dry for a sec so that gives us time to prepare all the other pieces. And I will start go uh, now first we will do our end piece. And our end piece has two uh, score lines, one at half inch and then a quarter of an inch gusset. I place the tape on the dented side between the cut edge and that first half inch score line. And we are going to taper on those on that half inch. And then we are going to fold on both score lines. Now this time our end piece will go in our folio with our folded over gusset and hinge for attaching it to the right side, to the left side, sorry. The folded over edge is on the left side. So now we have two pieces V. They both have one score line and we've placed the tape on the dented side between the cut edge and the score line and we're going to fold on both pieces on the score line and they will go on the front of the end piece and uh, you can center them a little bit so you have around a little bit more than one eighth space on the top and the bottom so that's what I, i'm going to do and i'm just going to eyeball it i will lay it flat because it's easier for me to attach it and i'm going to line it up with that score line after the quarter of an inch gusset and we don't need to taper these uh, flaps of the, the half inch inch of the flaps because we will cover it completely with our pattern paper. Make it straight. That's one. This, so this will open to our left and then we will place the other one on this side and that will open to the, to the right. So it has to be like this. And it doesn't really matter which one you attach first. You can play around when 
with which flap you want to have on the top and of close first or second. And again, I'm going to stay away a little bit more than one eighth of an inch from the bottom and line it up with the right side. And this is the front of the end piece. So now we will go to the inside. And here we are going to attach two flaps and a pocket. Starting with piece H. On this one we are going to taper the inch yeah, that half, half inch. Fold on its score line. And you see because there aren't a lot of pockets this goes way faster than the other side. So back to my end piece. And now I have the folding on my left, sorry, on my right. My left and right is so terrible, but it's on my right. And I'm going to line the flap up with this fold after the quarter of an inch gusset. So with the second score line, and I'm going to stay away a little bit from it. So the fold will still go easy after I attach the flap. So what we can do is just remove the tape packing just a little bit and I'm going to see pull it up to this way and then I will line it up giving no pressure on the place where the where I removed the tape backing so I line it up at the bottom staying away a little bit from that score line and I get it it's pretty hard to see on the black paper it's not completely straight Then I stick it down and I can remove the rest of the tape backing. And then I will give that a burnish on the inside. So that's the first one. Then the second one is going to go on the other side. That's piece the W. Again, we are going to taper these. This half inch. To hide the construction, fold on that score line, and this we will place on the left side of the end piece. And here we can just line it up with the bottom top and the left side. So I will do the same as I did with the other one. I'm going to remove the tape backing just a little bit. there I'm going to line it up and then I can stick it down on the part where I remove the tape backing and then while keeping it in place remove the rest of the tape backing so now you can play around with how you uh, want this to close. I did it on this position. And then I use a swing tap over here. But you can use a magnet or uh, another type of closure that you like. But we also going to place a pocket in between these two uh, flaps. So this is uh, our X piece that has score lines on three sides. So I've placed the tape on those three sides, on the dented side, and we are going to remove the corners. I'm just going to uh, cut that away. And then we are going to fold on all three score lines. And then I will make sure that they don't overlap. And that's fine. And I will give it a dry fit really quick because you want it to fit in between your flaps.
staying away from that score line a little bit on both sides and the measurement should provide for it and it does in my case but if you for some reason don't doesn't your pocket doesn't fit in between the score lines then you need to adjust it a little bit so you make new score line a little bit inwards and fold on that one because otherwise your folds won't go um, as they need to go so i'm just going to remove all the tape backing from the whole piece and then i'm going to place it lining it up on the bottom making sure i'm in between those score lines and it's always you just need to take your time see i'm struggling as well but when i move the tape out of one side only for some reason i'm getting my pockets on crooked so i just do it like this and then i burnish it so as you can see my pocket and the fold line there's about one eighth of an inch space in between that so i hope you can see that so this is it for this part and now we can attach it with our hinge into our cover into our folio so here is the folio and we are working on the right side we just attached this part and now we are going to attach the piece that we've made on this side so i'm going to fold on my first score line remove just a slight part of the tape backing and you can choose to just uh, attach your end piece onto it and then all the other stuff but i think this is easier because you when you open it up it will lay on top of this so it's not flat and that's why i like to attach all my flaps and pockets onto the piece before i attach it to the folio so again i'm going to place it but i'm going to stay away slightly from the fold line of the spine And lining it up with the bottom and the top stick that down keep my piece in place just like that and then we are going to fold on that second score line again to get that quarter of an inch pass it so this is what we have now and the next step is to place the flaps that will create the belly band feature just as we did on this side but on this side i've created it with only on this side without the pockets on the top flap now if you want it to be the same it's possible you just need to make uh, an extra l piece and an extra m piece that you can place onto your j piece and just do it exactly the same as you did on this side but I'm going to do it in the way that I've made it in my folio. So I'm only going to place the pocket on the, on the bottom. And I will keep the, other, the top piece just as a flap. So we will prepare those pieces before we attach it in the folio. And we will be needing pieces J, K and L. And I will start with piece K. Two score lines and I've placed tape on the dented side between the cut edge and the first score line so i will be folding on that one and fold on the other one you can fold on both score lines and then before we do anything with it we are going to uh, attach the pocket on it that's the l piece with three score lines tape between the cut edge and those three score lines and we are going to cut away the corners and again the tape is on the dented side and we are going to fold on those score lines again just 
making sure that they don't overlap. Because if they do, then you still have the bulk that you don't want. So if they do overlap, you just cut away slightly more of that corner. And this we will place on here. But I will do it with the two full score lines, just making the piece lay flat. And then I'm making sure that when I attach it, that I'm still able to see the score line. Don't have to really stay away from it, just make sure that you're able to see it. So I will line it up with that score line in the sides. And how small the piece sometimes, how more difficult to attach it. Just having a fight with my fingers and the tape over here. Oh, it's really sticky. And it's not how I want it. Let's see if I can still get it up. It didn't. No, that's totally ruined. So I'm going to make a new one for that. Okay, so I made my uh, K and L piece uh, over. I should have used my undo for that, but okay, that's fine. I've made a new piece. I stick, stuck it down so the pocket is now on top of the K piece. And now we will uh, have our J piece. Also two score lines. The dented side and I've placed tape between the cut edge and the first score mark. And we're also going to fold on both of those score lines. And what I also did, just like on the other side, I've made some tick marks with my pencil. Um, half an inch. I'm going to show you with my ruler. On the bottom, I went half an inch inwards on both sides. And on the sides, I did three, of three quarters up. And then I connected those tick marks and we are going to cut those corners away. So this is what we are going to attach onto the cover and I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the left side of the folio. I'm going to make some tick marks that will guide me so that I will center the pieces. So the zero on my ruler is in the middle now and I'm going to make a tick mark two and a half on two and a half on both sides because the piece that we are placing is five inches wide. And I will also do that on the top. And I will start with placing the J piece, the larger piece. Because it's easier to adjust the smaller piece when we need to. So again here, my tick marks that I will use as a guideline. They were hardly to see for you. But you also you don't want to see them after you made your, uh, made your folio. So... I have the large piece now and my folio is upside down and I'm going to fold on the first score line, remove that tape backing again and then line it up with those pencil marks that I just made and of course with the top of the folio. And that's two. We get a burnish and then fold on that score line, the second score line again, so you have your half inch gusset. So now laying it in the right direction again, we have our piece K with the pocket on it. And now before I stick it down, I'm just going to make sure that it lines up. when I use my pencil marks and now it looks like it doesn't fit but that's be because I'm don't have my gusset standing up straight so 
And it looks like I need to go to the left of my pencil mark just a little bit to make it line up together. So that's what I will do. Slightly go to the left of the pencil mark. For some reason, I'm really fighting with <laughs> sticking it down. You just give that a burnish and then it will be fine. So now when we have our half inch standing up, then it will line up. So all that's left to do is to make the waterfall. <laughs> 